One thing that's really difficult for a lot of Lightroom users who come over to Capture One is learning how to adapt to the new editing interface. Um, it can be incredibly daunting because, you know, Lightroom is used to just having everything over here, or Lightroom users are rather, and Capture One makes you think in a completely different way. So I wanted to show you guys a little bit today about how at least I edit uh, when I do reviews over at the Fablographer. I um, wanted to show you a little bit about how I edit the images that we shoot. So first off, full disclosure, over at the Fablographer, we barely ever edit our images. Uh, it's because of the fact that we want you guys to know that like this is usually what you get out of camera. But some images we will edit and we will show you the full possibilities or at least creative possibilities that you can get when you edit photos. So let's take a look right now. So here are some seascapes that I shot over in Williamsburg. Um, I live in Brooklyn and this is one of my favorite parks. So basically I was shooting with the Panasonic uh s1 and the 16 to 35 millimeter f4 so how would i edit this um you should know that there was a circular polarizer on here and i purposely overexposed because i wanted to be able to test the uh, dynamic range and some of the abilities of the lens plus i knew that like i could actually you know get more from the images dynamic range of the camera rather so there are a couple of different ways that you can start editing. Uh, you can, you know, work on a couple of things here in the lens correction pile. You could say, oh, okay, I want to do that. And then I can reset that to zero. Usually I won't. Um, if the manufacturer profile of a lens is not really there yet, there are a couple of other options here. You can say, hey, I want to work with generic pin cushion distortion. And I know that that's too much right there. So if I go to recommended lenses instead, uh, let's go back or manufacturer profile. Yes, that's what it was. And then I say the generic, then it automatically corrects on the edges. And then I can even, you know, stretch that further. So cool. Now I've got something uh, that looks pretty okay. And I'm all right with that. So we can work with this now. Let's go back to 100%. Cool. So you work with the lens stuff first, and then you move on over here to some of the editing options. Now in Lightroom, I would always tell people, work with the color channels first and take a look at what you can get. And I still actually do stick to that, but before you even do that, I would actually work on your white balance and I'd work on a color curve. If you get linear, linear response, then you get the flattest curve option and you can probably have the most color depth uh, possible. So basically I'm gonna work with the colors. So the dominant colors in the scene are green, blue, orange, a couple others. Let's see what happens when I work with the hues here. Cool, so that's really nice right there. I'm gonna work with that hue a bit. Saturation on the greens, making those pop just a little bit more as you see right there. Should probably uh, make that a little darker as well too. And now the hues, the oranges, see what's happening up here? It's changing a lot. I'm gonna saturate that more and I'm going to kill the brightness on that a little bit. And now you see it's starting to affect the image over there. So now if I go to high contrast, now I'm getting an image that I really like over there. And I purposely changed the curve just because of the fact that like sometimes I can, it will give me a better photo that's closer to what I want to actually work with. So I've got that. And then I come over here. And notice how, as I'm going from section to section, I'm really honing in and figuring out really what I want to do. So I'm going to kill the highlights a bit more, kill the whites maybe a bit more, deepen the blacks. When you deepen blacks, uh, you can actually create an image that looks a lot sharper to the human eye. Going to up the contrast. I think I may add some vignetting. No. 
Mm, actually, yeah, I like it. So I'm make that pop a bit. Clarity here, you have a couple of options here. You have neutral, you have punch, you have classic. Uh, you have punch, as I said. I like punch, so I'm going to work with that a bit. Let's see what happens if I uh, set it to what it was shot at. A little too muted for me. So I'm going to go with daylight white balancing instead. And now I get more of those blues that I was talking about. Now I'm going to sharpen. Notice how, again, I'm going from section to section because it makes me focus on one edit again over another. Uh, not going to work on that. Not going to work on that. Don't really care for that. Do I care for anything here? No, those are my presets. Don't really care once again. So now I'm going to... Let's see what happens when I mess with the whites. Okay. I get a lot more from the highlights. And I get even more from the highlights there. Cool. Cool. I like that. Now if I do this, I'm getting even more from the mid-tones. And notice what's happening to the curve over here. It looks nice. So I'm going to work with this, and I'm going to keep this here. Now I think I'm pretty much done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sync it to a couple of photos. Let me sync it to these ones. And what I do is I copy the adjustments and I apply them. And now I make sure that all of those are copied in. And then it'll just do it. And that's how I can quickly edit through these images. Well, edit the images rather. So now let's say I want to work on this image. Completely different. Let's turn it into a black and white. So completely negating anything. Okay, cool. It's fully reset. We know that. I knew that. I was just keeping you guys on your toes. So again, working with the generic option here because this profile is not available right now. Let me confirm that. Yeah, no, it's not available right now in Capture One. So we're going to work with this. Uh, we're going to keep the sharpness on. There is no real light fall off, so we don't have to worry about that. Chromatic aberration. Done. We're all set there. So we did all the lens corrections. Maybe I will undo this just a tad. Cool. I'm looking at that straight line over there. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to rotate this freehand just a bit to straighten that up even more. And now we're seeing that this looks a little distorted. So now... There we go. At zero. No, I'm going to give it... There you go. Perfect. So you would mess with the generic. Capture One's distortion editing tool is pretty good. It's not like Adobe Upright. Adobe Upright is pretty fantastic, and I miss it in this program, but it's not here. So now I can work with all of these. And see what happens when I go to Extra Shadow, and then High Contrast, and then Film Standard, and then linear response. With linear response, it's sort of like you get a flat profile, so you can work with a whole bunch of stuff. Going to work with daylight white balance, but let's see what cloudy does and shade. Tungsten's going to be all blue, I'm sure. Oh, that's so cool. Flash. Let's deal with shade. Cool. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with this as a black and white image. And what shade does is it allows me to separate the color tones versus like daylight. You know, everything's more of the same color tone. Cloudy might arguably be better. Actually, yeah, let's work with cloudy because there's more blue there. There's more orange there. We can separate things out. So now if I enable it as a black and white, I'm going to mess with things a bit. So now we get more details out of this section over there. I mess with yellow, even more details. Green, uh, you get very slight details over there. Cyan, very slight details. Blue, you're getting a lot more. And magenta, you're getting nothing. So, okay, we've got some of our details now. And we've worked with specific color channels. So now we get an even more flat image. And we can work with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want more contrast. But I also want a little bit more brightness. And I want to kill the highlights more. And I want less whites. I want deeper blacks to make it look better. A little bit more shadows. I want clarity. 
Uh, but I want it to be classic looking instead of natural. Actually, no, natural looks good. Let's punch. Let's go with natural. And now let's vignette a bit. I actually like vignetting. A lot of people don't. They think it's uh, a little cliche. I think that it's a very powerful tool for photographers, and I don't think that we use it enough. So now I create a very moody image, add some sharpness, and that's about it. If you want to see it in full, there is a way to enter full screen just like this. I like that photo. That was the other one that I edited. I think that looked cool. So now I get out of that. And that's really about it. Let's show you a couple of other photos, though. Now, in the past couple of months here at the Foblographer, we haven't really had a lot of time to test products uh, as much as we would, partially because of the fact that, well, COVID-19 is happening right now, and there's not really a whole lot of time for us to test anything, really. So let me go through and show you guys a couple of things right now. Let's take a look at this stuff during the party. Let's go to the green images. Let's go to something like, come on, that was an image there. And sometimes it'll take a long time to render, partially because I'm on a Drobo, but usually it won't. So I'm working with the Sigma 24-70 2.8 here. And I'm going to, let's see what happens when I work with, let's see if that's here. I'm not even sure it is. 24-70 DGDN. No, their previous one is. So now I'm going to work, instead of with manufacturer profile, I'm going to work with a generic. And it, see how much of an improvement that was? So let me show you again. This is manufacturer profile. And this is the generic profile. Cool, right? Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to mess with this just a bit. I'm going to go to daylight. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that gives us a little bit of a great starting ground to work with this. So now I'm going to work with the color editor. Do I really want the linear response? No, I really don't. I'm okay with, uh, no. Film standard. I like that look more. So now, if I mess with the hues, what happens? Take a look. See, this is his skin when it's not really messed with, and this is it otherwise. This is much more accurate of a color, and I'm not going to saturate him. Uh, we don't need him looking like an orange or anything like that. So I'm going to brighten his skin up, and then I'm going to work with the hues more. That's more of the background over there. And now, hues of blue, nothing really going on over there. Cool, okay. So now, what I can do is I can mess with the settings there. I want that. Uh, this is because I didn't really edit the image before. That's why that's coming up that way. Or I did edit the image, rather. I'm sorry about that. Doing the shadow adjustments, and I'm going to give classic punch. Take a look at how sharp this image is. Let's move back. Yeah, that looks great. I'm all right with that. Cool, so I'm gonna copy the adjustments here and I'm gonna look for a similarly lit image. That's not one. Hmm. Do I want that one? No. Let's apply the edits to this one. Let's see what happens. Uh, apply adjustments. Nope, obviously that didn't work. So let's see what I get here. So, I'm gonna work with the edits once again. Generic, and I'm gonna go with 100. Cool. Now I'm going to Let's see what happens with the different white balances. Let's say flash, way too much. Let's say daylight, nope. And let's say shot. Shot works, cool. I'm gonna lower the exposure first off. 
and I'm gonna go with linear response. And now when I do that, I can probably actually boost the exposure back up. Yeah, cool. Notice how flat the image is right now. So now I can work with the editor again. And let's say the hue of the oranges, what's that look like? No, gonna work with that like that. And the reds. Uh, you can also do this, edit the color range. So right now I'm gonna set this to that section only. And I'm going to saturate that section only. Actually, no, I won't saturate that section only. That's bad news bears. So saturating the yellows, let's see what we get. The greens are okay. Um, no, I'm not liking this. Let's do that. And let's go with this. That's the generic. That's 100%. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kill the exposure just a tad. Cool. I like that. But let's see. Let's go to some inspiration. I'm going to use a couple of presets that I have over here. I'm going to use... Capture One has a couple that are built in. What's the fashion preset look like? Just a little bit of pop. IQ Professor looks okay. Cool, let's zoom in just so I can show you guys. This is a Canon, no, this is a Sigma lens actually. I thought it was a Canon, Never mind, Cause I shot Canon and Sigma both that night. And you can work with other presets or styles. Capture One likes to call them styles, just if you wish. So that's really how I go about editing. Remember, it's about editing piece by piece and section by section instead of just going all the way down and then scrolling all the way back up. I don't think that that is really conducive to creating better images. I think really focusing on one section at a time is a lot better for you. And that's really about it, folks. Take care. I hope this was helpful.